Hello Internet, today we are going to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be looking at OpenSCAD. Um, what this is is a software-based uh, CAD program. This means you can create CAD models like you would in uh, Fusion 360 or, or some other design program, but you can do it through software. Uh, so we're going to be hopefully doing a few different things on this. I have an idea of sort of a project that I want to build. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> um, so. If it does, there will be a link in the description that you can actually go and use this um, uh, more easily. If it doesn't work, then uh, who, who knows? <laughs> um, but this video is just going to be a really basic overview about how to use this and what it does. Um, we're going to build a dice and, and use that as sort of a basic thing that we can create. Um, throughout that, we're going to kind of cover a little bit about how all of this works and how you can start uh, programming and using this. Um, this is an open source project, um, so it's public and it's free. Um, so if you want to try this, you can download it and use it yourself. Uh, I am using the actual tools. So this is a full environment. You can see there's a rendering window on the right here that's actually going to render either a preview or the actual rendered output. Um, I have had them kind of appear differently depending on what you do. So keep that in mind. Uh, your preview and render may look slightly different. Um, and then on the left is where we would put our code. Um, so the, the basic way we can do this is just write something we want to create. Um, so in this case, let's create a cube with a size of 10 and create a preview. And there we go. We're done. Um, so there, there's our dice. Uh, but all this is doing is saying create a cube with a size of 10 at this position. This is useful for, for creating that. Um, and we can even move it around uh, as much as we want. But... <laughs> There, there's a little bit more that we probably want to do with this. This was a very quick example, uh, but I want something that has a little bit more defined to it. Um, so you can see it's actually suggesting different syntax for the different cube functions um, that are actually going to generate this. Uh, SCAD or open SCAD calls these modules. So these are creating objects by executing a, a function syntax. Um, there are There is a difference between what a function is and what a module is. A function returns a value. Um, so that would be like some calculated value of like three or pi or some sine wave or however you want to do that. And then a module is going to be returning an object. So in this case, our cube. Um, so in this case, I'm defining it with a width, depth and height of 16. If you're coming from Unity, um, there's a really important uh, change that you'll need to be aware of, um, and that is that Z is up. Um, so this is not uh, X, Y, Z, where, where Y is vertical. Um, Z is actually going up and down. Uh, other than that, everything else is good. Um, so we're giving it 16 on each side, and I'm also going to turn on centering on. So we can do that by saying center equals true. And that's going to, instead of moving the uh, model so that it goes at zero, 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 and then is extruded along that. Instead, we're actually going to center the origin at the middle of the model and then move everything equal distance in all axes. And so if I go and render this again, our cube will move and we'll get a slightly bigger one because I made it all 16 instead of 10. Um, so you can use this to render different things, um, but that's that. So we've, we're, we've created a cube. You can chain functions. Um, so the way this works is by uh, applying functions to all of the children after it. What that means is that if I want to apply a rotation to this, I can just say rotate. Uh, we want to rotate around the Z axis because I want to ro rotate around the vertical axis. Um, so we're going to do just another array syntax here and do like 45 so you can actually see that it's rotating. And so if I run this now, this rotation is going to be applied to all children afterwards, which means this cube is now going to get that applied to it. We can apply other things too, so I can add like a text, like, uh, hello world. Um, and this should also render our hello world text. And now we have this really <laughs> awful example, um, but you kind of uh, start to get the point of how, how you can add some of these things and do different things with this. Um, you can also, um, let's see here, let's put in a sphere of 10, I guess, uh, and see what we get here. So, okay, so now we have a, a sphere kind of centered inside of our cube. 
You can also do Boolean operations, which would be subtracting or joining geometry with one another. So you can do a union, a um, division, I, I, I'm difference, sorry, um, and then a intersection. Um, so we want the difference of the first model, which is going to be our, rotation, our rotated cube. That's going to be the base model. And then everything else after that inside of this uh, thing that we're executing is going to subtract from that. So now instead of our sphere being inside of our, our cube or adding onto it, so we're going to have like the circular thing, we're actually going to carve a hole through, through that. Uh, so if I run this now, you can see we actually have this orange bit in here that was actually cut out. So this is actually the inside of the model now. And we just have like that where that sphere was is now cut out. Um, there are some other hidden things inside of here. Um, there's some hidden like uh, I forget the name of it. It's like FN um, is a special customization for the number of facets, um, which would be the number of faces on your thing. Um, so if you increase that value, um, into a lot of these things, you will get different uh, results. So I think we could change that. I am not entirely familiar. I haven't tried this, so we're going to see. There we go. Um, so I changed, I up increased the number of facets to 200 on this. And now you see our thing is slightly less blocky. I can reduce this down to like five and, and we'll, we'll get Whatever this is, um, not very great. Uh, so that's how you can kind of customize some of this stuff. We're going to be adding text so we can do a dice. Um, so we already have our cube. Um, so let's undo this rotation. There we go. And get rid of the sphere. It's a, a dice. We don't, we don't need spheres. And so if we re-render this, we'll just get our cube. And then what I can do is add in some text. So let's go outside of this difference just for now and add some text. So we're going to do a uh, text of one. The size is going to attempt to make it whatever size it is vertically. Um, so the height of a character, different characters are going to have different um, widths, but the, it, this will try to get it close to that height for, for characters. Um, just the way fonts work, some characters are not going to be the full height. Um, so they might be slightly shorter or, or bigger depending on how all of that works. Um, but it should be close. Um, so just a just a font thing. Um, so we're going to increase this and we'll just say 12, I guess. And then I'm going to also give it an H align of center and a V align of center. And this is centering the text. So it's uh, vertically and horizontally centered. So in the center of that character, it's going to appear. And then I can run this and get an error because I didn't have a semicolon. Um, the error appears down here in the uh, console down here. Uh, so if we run this again, there we go. Uh, and we'll see nothing, I don't think. Um, our text is inside of our cube, so we, we don't see anything. Uh, but we can translate this and move this up. So look, translation is how you move things. So translate this by X, Y, and Z. We want this at the top here. Um, so we're going to put this up uh, zero and then eight. Again, Z is up. So we're trying to move our text up. Um, so add a space and then it will apply that trans uh, translation to everything that is to the right of it. So all, all of the children elements. Uh, so if we run this now, we now get a one on top of our cube. So that's how we're going to make our dice. Um, that's how all of this is going to work. And we should hopefully be able to do a difference because uh, typically we want to inset our digits into our dice. Uh, so we're going to throw this into the difference. And now you can see that one is cut out inside of this like so. And, and we get that. Um, so now we can do some other fun, fun things. Um, again, everything ap applies to the children. Uh, and so what this means is if I want to take this one and rotate it, I don't need to change anything else. I don't need to try to like reverse the scale or do some weird rotation and then translate it. We can keep everything that's here. And if I want this on the bottom now, I can just add a rotation in front of this because we're going to rotate that entire right hand side. 
Um, so what this is doing is first creating the text at zero zero, centering that at the zero zero origin point, moving it up eight units into the sky, and then rotating that. So if we this is our origin and this is where our thing is, by rotating it 180 degrees, we're actually way below at negative eight if we rotate 180 degrees. Um, so that's the magic we're going to use. And I want to rotate around either X or Y. It shouldn't matter, so we're just going to do this. And there we go. And so if I run this now, hopefully <laughs> um, we should have a one on the bottom now. And so we can change that to, say, six. Um, the way six sided dice work is the top and bottom should always equal seven. Um, so if we run this now, that should become a six. And we can just repeat this for all the other sides of our dice. Um, so all we're doing is just figuring out where the height should be and then translating that and changing that accordingly. Uh, so let's copy that a bunch. Um, and so we have one, six, uh, two, and five and then three and four. Um, so those should be on opposite sides. And so this can be uh, 90 and 270. In this case, I'm not particularly concerned about the orientation of the numbers. Um, you can just rotate the dice if that, if that matters. Um, so I'm not really concerned about that. We're just trying to get everything to work. And then I think, I can do this, and then these I want to be rotated along the Y axis, if I'm remembering. I don't actually know. Um, we'll, we'll find out real quick if this worked or not. Um, but it looks like I got those right. Um, I'm still figuring out how to actually effectively or uh, move around inside of this viewer. Um, it's CAD stuff, so you have like an origin, a floating origin that you move around by right clicking, left clicking, then rotates your camera around that and then you can use the mouse to scroll in and out um i i've never been a fan of these kind of camera things so i'm still very confused um but there we go and that's our dice uh so now that we've kind of got this working i can render this and we get a fun sound and i think i broke it <laughs> um and so the reason this is broke is because uh <clears throat> our text was lying to us is sort of what, what was happening there. Um, this isn't this didn't actually work. Um, our text is a 2D object, so we actually need to add an additional step here. Um, so in this case, we have our text. We want to. Um, I forget the projection. Nope. Linear extrusion. There we go. Um, and so we can extrude this by any amount we, we want. So I'm just going to choose I guess. Uh, and again, we're chaining these things. So uh, it's step by step that's going to apply to everything to the right hand side of it. Um, so in this case, I want to extrude before rotating or translating things. Um, if you do this afterwards, things get weird. Um, but we should be able to run this now. And now we get that, which I didn't expect. And then if we click render, we get this. Um, so some weird things are happening here. Um, and that's because we have a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. And then we're moving things eight and then linearly extruding them two more units, um, which means that the only intersecting geometry is right at the edge, is right on the same face. Um, so really, there's almost nothing that's actually intersecting. We actually need to move this in just a bit more so that it actually has something to intersect with. So if I move this to say seven instead, um, we'll have one unit of intersection that we can use to do all of this. Um, so if I do that and render it again, uh, everything's good. Um, you, you'll see you're seeing two different things because I'm using a preview and a render. Um, so there's that's what's going on there. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's our dice. Um, so we now have one, two, and three on that side, and then we should have three or four, five, and six over here. And that's our that's that's a dice. Um, so this is a a valid dice that we can actually use somewhere uh, and, and do things with. 
I do want to take this a little bit further um, just because we're kind of throwing this together. Um, right now, we're just building a cube um, and we're just building a dice. I want this to be something that is more parameterized and that we can actually do something with. Uh, so I'm going to create a, what's called a module. Uh, we talked a little bit about this. Modules return objects, functions return values. And so what that means is if I want to create a module that generates this cube, I can do module of uh, create cube, and we're going to give it a size parameter with a default of 16. 16 is one of the default sizes for dice um, in millimeters. Um, so that's why, that's why I'm using 16. And then we can move this down here. And so this now defines our entire cube. Uh, we're also going to do a uh, text size. And we're going to kind of calculate this as size times 0 0.75. Um, this way, everything, we're, we're going to basically move all of these uh, sizes that we just created. We're going to move them out into our own separate thing. Um, and then we're going to have a translation uh, <laughs> text location. I, I don't know names for these things yet. Um, and that's just going to be equal to uh, size divided by two to get it get us to eight. And then we're going to subtract some amount. Um, we probably want this to scale as well as you increase the size of the dice. Um, or we can just have it always be like a one millimeter size and then a text extrusion size. I will just set that equal to two. Um, and so all I'm going to do is just swap out all of this stuff uh, so we can actually use the parameters that we just created instead. And this way, everything should be able, we should be able to change the size if I've, if I've done this correctly. Um, so all we're doing is just reusing all of those normal things and then text size, swap out all the 12s. Um, I missed one. <laughs> text location, this one. And then these, instead of 16, just needs to be equal to size, like so. And there we go. All right, uh, we're going to ignore that save. <laughs> um, and now if I rerun this, nothing happens uh, because we, we created this module. It's like creating a function in C sharp or some other programming language you might be familiar with. We never called the function though, so it's never actually run. Um, so that's what we need to do next is we need to go um, create a cube. And we're just going to say create a cube with the size of 16 and run this. Uh, and let's let's try capitalizing that. That'll probably work a lot better. There we go. Um, so we just created our cube using that thing. So we can now reuse this. Um, so I can create another cube with the size of, say, 12. Uh, we'll do 12. That's going to show up inside of this other dice, which isn't very useful. So we're actually going to uh, translate this up um, by uh, 8 plus 6, which is just half of both of these. Um, so it should be sitting right on top. So 8 plus 6 is 14. Uh, and there we go. And let's add just a rotation as as well. Um, so yeah, this won't matter because we're rotating it on the Z axis, so it'll just spin in place. Um, so the order doesn't matter too much here. Let's just give it 30. And there we go. And if I run this now, we now have a dice on another dice. And we didn't have to redefine the entire dice. We can just reuse the one that we created. Um, so this gives us a way to like define a component, like a gear, a gear or something else, and then reuse it in a useful way. Um, so we could have like a parameterized gear that had the number of teeth or the number of whatever else predefined. And then you could just insert that as made sense into your project. Um, so there's that. Um, this will probably be the first of a few videos about this. Um, if you're curious and want to use that, um, go for it. This also supports exporting to things like STLs and exporting to uh, 3D printers. So if you have uh, OctoPrint, 
this can support exporting directly to that um, so that you can then print these parts out on your 3D printer and use that for, for real things. Um, so however you want to use this, uh, go for it. Um, I'll leave links to where you can find this and some of the documentation down below so you can, you can get your hands on it and explore. Um, but hopefully that's everything we have for now. Uh, we'll be tinkering with this a little bit more and then moving this into uh, bad ideas that, <laughs> that I've had. Um, so that, that's where we are right now. Hopefully this is interesting and, and you, you want to use this. Um, if not, hopefully at least this is some other thing that you can think about. <laughs> anyway, I will leave that here for now because um, I think that's everything we needed to get done. So thanks everybody for watching and I hope you have a great day. So until next time, see you internet.